So let's uh, turn our Bibles to John chapter 15. So I will just be expounding the first three verses. So from verses 1 to 3. Uh, so I'll just read the text. John chapter 15 verses 1 to 3. I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. <clears throat> so, here we see that uh, in these verses, the setting is the same as uh, the previous chapter 14. Uh, like uh, Jupin had covered this thing. And it is still the night before the crucifixion of uh, Lord Jesus. So it is still this night uh, in which he will be arrested uh, by hundreds of Roman soldiers in the Garden of Gethsemane. And in the previous chapter, we have just seen that uh, the disciples have now left the upper room. We have seen that at the end of chapter 14, when Jesus says that, uh, get up and let us go from here. And now they are proceeding out of the upper room and making their journey towards the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus is still teaching during this short walk to the Garden of Gethsemane. And he continues to pour out truth after truth to the disciples. So that it gets instilled in their minds and in their hearts. Uh, and there were basically two things that uh, Jesus said in this upper room that hit them very badly. So the disciples were shaken and they could not comprehend two things what Jesus had said. Firstly, Jesus had told them that he was about to depart and go back to the Father. And they were shocked by this thing because uh, if you see that all his disciples had left their individual professions, they had left their fishing profession, their tax collecting profession, they had left their former lives to invest everything in the Lord Jesus. The only life that they had now was in the Lord Jesus and following Him. And Jesus now is telling them that He is leaving and going back to the Father. So this was the first major issue that struck the disciples. Second issue that uh, had, you know, baffled and uh, shocked the disciples was when Jesus told them that one of them would betray him. So this was the second issue and they still did not know who it was because if you see Judas discreetly slips off in the night uh, without being noticed and uh, we see here that hence Jesus has to give an explanation to both these issues which are troubling the disciples. Now here we see that uh, Jesus has to give an explanation about his departure and also about this mystery of the betrayer. So has this person fallen from grace? Has he lost his salvation? <clears throat> and what are the disciples to make of this betrayer? So over here we see that uh, in these verses, that is the entire uh, context from 1 to 11, Jesus will be addressing all these issues. Jesus will ad address both these issues primarily. And uh, over here he tells them that in spite of me leaving you, uh, they will, I will still continue to take care of you and uh, he pictures himself as a vine and he, and he represents the disciples as branches over here. Jesus tells them that even after his physical departure, they will still be, uh, they will still remain connected to each other spiritually and as they will abide in Jesus, he will abide in them and he will supply them everything they need. So, your Jesus, uh, when he means supply, does not mean health, wealth and the prosperity gospel. 
Yeah, Jesus is speaking of peace, wisdom, guidance, direction, and strength. And Jesus explains that there is only one source for all those needs, and that is Himself. And then Jesus goes on to comfort them and explain to them about the betrayer. So over here, I've titled uh, the chapter, uh, the verses one to three, as the picture. So Jesus explains to his disciples in uh, in uh, terms of a picture. So Jesus paints a picture on the minds of his disciples, explaining to them how their relation will be working in the future when he physically departs. How will the relation continue so he depicts a picture in their minds and this is exactly how is our current relationship with jesus so we hear this kind of uh, the verses 1 to 3 what jesus is speaking this in uh, theological terms is called as a allegory now uh, we have parables as well as allegories in the bible while a parable has only one driving point so it has only one major point and allegory goes beyond a parable so there are many many theological and biblical truths within an allegory a parable has many details it has several details that are involved and they are all very important but if sometimes if this is not interpreted properly these details can take you in a wrong direction and we tend to misinterpret misinterpret the main point but we see here in an allegory there are very very few characters and they all uh, if we pay close attention to that they lead us to the point exactly so it is it is not as uh, diversified as a parable or out here now we have also seen a similar type of allegory in uh, john chapter 10 when uh, jesus says that he is the good shepherd he says that there are sheep there's a gatekeeper there are wolves there are thieves there are robbers there's a pasture so over here jesus has already used another uh, allegory in uh, the uh, cha- john chapter 10 now when we study the entire bible like juven always states that there are descriptive and prescriptive texts so we cannot allegorize the entire bible but there are certain there are pa- parables where we learn from there are descriptive texts and there are prescriptive texts and here we see that we interpret an allegory literally so a allegory is a prescriptive text so this 1 2 3 is a prescriptive text out here now as we look at this picture uh jesus basically introduces four basic parts in verses 1 to 3 so i'll be covering four parts in this verses 1 to 3 the first uh, aspect that jesus introduces is called the vine so jesus says the here in verse 1 is i am the true vine now we see over here that jesus was in israel which is in middle east and over there uh we see that uh, there are many vineyards over there uh, and uh, this is a very very thriving agricultural business over there where people grow grapes to eat and drink from the fruit of it so over here jesus being a master teacher uh, gives an example of vine a vine so over here he identifies himself as a true vine and uh, this is very significant because uh, over here he says that i am the true vine and uh, we are already familiar with the gospel of uh, john where uh, we see that the backbone of the gospel of john is uh, this i am statements we have also studied this in our fundamentals uh, where uh, this is uh, this i am that jesus uses here is the seventh and the last i am that he has used over here and every one of these i am statements speaks of the divinity of jesus i am if you see in the old testament was a name which god identified he had told when moses asked him that what should i tell the people who sent me he says i am so over here jesus 
there are seven i am statements in the book of john and we have uh, also studied here the book of john speaks of the divinity of jesus and over here this is the final i am so over here jesus is saying that he is telling his disciples and also us that i am god i am all that you need and i am the source for all your needs so over here jesus if we closely look over here he says that i am the true wine he is not saying i am a true wine he is saying i am only the i am one and only i am the true wine and uh, through this wine the grace of god will come in our lives and to be disconnected from this wine is to be disconnected from god to be disconnected from his grace now over here in verse 1 we see that uh, true also means authentic real it means genuine and the implication of this is that there are also many counterfeit and false wines now over here jesus is referring to the religion of the pharisees that was pre- prevalent at that point of time it was a re- it was a direct reference to the self righteousness that was being promoted and taught and endorsed in apostate israel there was no grace and there was no salvation in the message of pharisees and it is very true now also that if there are so many kind of you know uh teachings and uh, there are so many people which if it is their teachings are not rooted in the bible and you are clearly jesus said that if if i am not at the center of those that teaching and uh, that message there is no grace there is no salvation in that message so you have see clearly that jesus distinguishes himself distinguishes himself as a true wine there is no one like him and all life will come from him and through him <clears throat> so over here by this imagery jesus is trying to explain to the disciples that he is the sole source for their supply of every need that they have and this is also applicable to us as believers uh, we need to be reminded that jesus has the exclusive right on everything that we need so this is again talking of needs it's not talking of our wants so second part of the picture that uh, jesus introduces is the wine dresser now over here by wine dresser jesus is referring to the first person in the trinity and that is god the father we see here in the previous verse that uh, jubin brother had covered chapter 14 we see 21 times the word father is mentioned and uh, when i will be covering the entire section from verse 1 to 11 itself it is uh, mentioned four times and again in the beginning of chapter 13 father is mentioned twice so jesus at the end of his ministry just prior to his crucifixion we see that he consist he can uh continually and constantly speaking of the ministry of god the father now as believers uh we have this tendency to forget the ministry of god the father we focus on jesus which is spot on yes we also uh, never forget the holy spirit and yes we coming from you know a pentecostal background so yes we never forget the holy spirit but in our and in our walk it is many a times we lose complete focus on god the father and his mem- and his ministry and it's like as if there are only two people in the trinity so over here jesus is speaking and he is reminding us of god the father god the father being the person who oversees everything in your christian life everything that uh, we have comes from god every good thing like craig had mentioned uh it is god the father that ultimately sent jesus christ it is god the father that 
send the holy spirit and it is god the father that oversees every believer's spiritual walk so over here uh, jesus is picturing god the father as a wine dresser wine dresser simply means a farmer a gardener a land worker who assumes full responsibility of planting the vine and also of taking care of the branches and in reality we see that the father is not only a farmer a gardener uh, he is also the land owner he also owns this land and in spite of being the land owner he does it all he himself tills the ground he plants the vine he prunes the branches he stimulates growth of these branches he cuts off the dead branches and throws them into fire he gathers the fruit so from this uh, we conclude that everything proceeding from god the father uh, every good thing that we have in our life proceeds from god the father god the father uh, god as such Uh, the entire trinity is actively involved in our spiritual growth it is like god is not disconnected for us or sleeping and waiting for us to sit and do our will over here he is actively involved in our spiritual growth in our day to day walk and in our spiritual progress and he is the author of every good thing in our life and uh, even when uh, jesus taught his disciples to pray he says that pray to the father and pray in my name so even jesus told that you know he explained the ministry of the father in prayer the third picture that uh, jesus uh, paints in this uh, imagery is non fruitful branches <clears throat> now this part has been very very troublesome for many bible teachers and uh, this is where we get unbiblical concepts like person losing his salvation people falling from grace but the key to understanding this verse 2 is when we see verse 6 i'll just read verse 6 verse 6 says that if any one does not abide in me he is thrown away like a branch and withers and the branches are gathered and thrown into the fire and burned so we see here whenever the bible is studied it has to be studied in context it you have to see what are the verses preceding it what are the verses coming after it so when we do not read things in context that is when we dr- we tend to draw our own interpretation rather than the biblical interpretation of this so over here when we read uh verse 6 we come to know who jesus is actually speaking of in verse 2 so he is saying that people who do not abide in me do not abide we is purely speaking of people that were never saved in the first place so it is not a question of losing grace losing salvation it is a person that was never a believer in the first place now we see that verse 2 and verse 6 are connected together they are clearly and there are many examples of this in the bible and uh, we see that uh, this uh, jesus is speaking of this branch over here that does not bear any fruit and primarily he is addressing a judas kind of a branch here he is explaining to them why judas was like that why he was a betrayer uh, yesterday jubin brother had uh, was teaching us that there is god's sovereignty and there is man's responsibility so over here when a person rejects the gospel it is his responsibility we see here that judas had walked with jesus he was with jesus he was in he in fact he did a lot of good things he also had when jesus did the miracle of multiplying loaves he also might have served but he was never a true believer he had unbelief and this is talking of those type of people in the judas branch when he says over here uh, when jesus is saying that every branch in me uh, that does not bear fruit so he is, this should not be 
the taken the same as when apostle paul is saying that we are in christ these people are never in christ here this is to be as understood as that these people were in close association with christ yes they were a disciple or a follower who professed christ but they did not possess christ so there is a difference between professing yes jesus jesus and you know uh, god indwelling in you so when we see in ephesians that to be a true believer holy spirit has it has to indwell in you and that only happens when you have a uh, true belief over here so you might profess yes i am jesus jesus but you are never a true believer like the case of judas you can be caught up in all the church activities and in all the flow of things but still you cannot have the lord inside you inside one's heart in one's soul such a person can be religious if you see that person yes he is religious he will come to church he will be in every kind of ministry there won't be any ministry that is hand is not there so he will be attending every ministry but that will be for his own profit for his own gain and truly that person is not saved we see a judas also you had associated himself with jesus for his own gain he was the money bearer he used to steal from that money bearer he used to profit from his association with jesus he was never saved the reason why these branches do not bear fruit is simply because they are dead they are dead wood and there is no life in them so because there is no life in them there will not be any productivity that comes from that branch and it says in this passage that god the father takes it away so when we see the greek translation of takes it away it simply means to rise it up or lift it up but the idea over here in this context is not to lift it up so that it can be exalted but it can it god the father lifts it up so that it can be removed it can be carried away it can be thrown away these are the non fruit bearing branches which will be gathered up together and they will be thrown into the fire as it is mentioned in verse 6 now we need to understand that uh, whenever god's people gather together the bible says it there will always be wheat and tares there will always be those who know the lord in a intimate manner and there will be people who know about god so there is a difference between knowing god intimately knowing about god and in this case these non fruitful branches that uh, jesus is speaking to is about those people who know about god they never ever had a intimate relationship with god there was no real relation in fact with god fourthly uh, jesus in this picture that he has painted he speaks about fruit bearing branches so here jesus speaks about true disciples a true believer in him every true believer in jesus will bear fruit so there is uh, if there is no fruit there is no saving faith so you cannot as a true believer if we consider our self as true believers we will bear fruit otherwise we are this non fruit bearing branch so there is no way with god indwelling in us and sanctifying us that we will not bear fruit and uh, this verse also says that that every branch that bears fruit god the father prunes it so this is talking of sanctification this is talking of cutting extra things in our life this is different from lifting it up and carrying it away he actually trims it back so we'll see here what exactly this trimming is why would you trim something in the first place so it tells us in verse 2 it in verse 2 that this trimming the sanctification is done so that this fruit will bear more so that this branch will bear more fruit so if we see any gardener we will notice that 
there are certain times of the year that uh, this gardener trims back the plants and as an onlooker we'll we'll find it very harsh yeah he's cutting this plant he's chopping off the extra branches but this is done so that that productivity of that branch will increase so over here we see that you know god the father is not sleeping and there is no uh, slackness on his part but he is actively involved in our lives trimming us back and what does he trim he trim him he trims everything that hinders our spiritual growth whatever will come in the way of god and him that he will trim he seen in the bible in the old testament god says i am a jealous god so he will trim everything that comes in his and your way now let us look at how he does this trimming so uh firstly he certainly does this by the word we have uh, the bible itself says that uh, you know the word is a living and active and sharper than any two edged sword and we experience this uh, akshay and we always discuss that whenever someone is giving the message we feel someone is like piercing and you know actually taking us pure and ripping us apart so that is that is the power of the word so even when hearing the message we experience this thing we are convicted when we hear the word of god we are convicted and we repent and then that is the time we confess our sins and that changes our direction of our life uh that is the father bringing uh us back to him by trimming him by trimming us back and this is done by the ministry of his word secondly god does it by directly taking control of your lives so there are many time things in our lives that become too important to us so they supersede god and distract us from our focus towards god and from us abiding in god so god the father what does he do so god the father by his invisible hand will just remove those things from our lives it might be remo- removing your health he might make you sick he might remove a job from you he might remove a possession from you it is painful so this process of pruning is a painful process it hurts but god has a master plan which we do not foresee we cannot see the future he has a plan for us and that is the second way how god prunes us back so there will be a spirit there will be a greater spiritual growth in our life thirdly god causes trials in our life and also there is this aspect of divine discipline uh which god exercises on us so that we are pruned back hence we see here that you know that uh, how actively god the father is involved in each one of our spiritual lives and in our sanctification and he is pruning us back so that we may be we may bear more spiritual fruit so when we see the bible uh, we see here that bible is our entire life christian life is not health wealth prosperity over here when we read the bible in context we see this pruning that god the father does it it will be a painful pruning because we are still in the flesh we are still sinful we will continue to sin and god will correct us as a loving father how we correct our children so our life journey is not going to be a bed of roses and once this pruning is done we see what is the result of this pruning what does god the father accomplish in us by this pruning when this pruning happens then we as believers we truly uh, we will have christ likeness we will we'll develop things like humility we'll develop things like pure motives selfless desires godly character and at most our spiritual ministry will be effective 
if we are not pruned even our ministry even our preaching will have no effect so for us to be spiritually effective and to be used mightily in god's uh, extension of his kingdom we need to be pruned so when we study bible in context we actually come to know that none of us will have a, a smooth sailing life where there will be no season of pruning and trimming back so there will always whenever we will go astray whenever we go away from god's spotlight god is going to use trimming and he will trim us back uh we see lastly in verse 3 uh we see the you that uh, jesus is using is refers to again he's speaking to the fruit bearing disciples remember over here that judas is not present now he is already left so over here jesus has is speaking to the 11 over there and uh, when he says that uh, they are already clean uh, jesus over here is referring to the miracle of new birth and uh, over here that he is referring to new birth that uh the disciples have been washed he's talking of regeneration over here and they have been cleansed by the pollution of sin uh jesus had earlier mentioned in john chapter 3 verse 5 unless one is born of water and the spirit he cannot enter the kingdom of god so i think so jubin brother only had covered this when jesus was speaking to nicodemus he had mentioned this and uh this is applicable for us also as believers today when we are born by the spirit we are also washed in the water of new birth so there is a new birth that happens and that is the meaning of being born of water and in spirit we see in titus chapter 3 verse 5 titus chapter 3 verse 5 so we see a paul is saying that he saved us not because of works done by our by us in righteousness but according to his own mercy by the washing of regeneration and the renewal of the holy spirit so again over here paul is speaking of the sovereignty of god that jubin brother just spoke yesterday and he is speaking about being born by the spirit and we are washed in the water of the new birth same thing has been is uh, spoken about in titus by apostle paul uh, we see uh, when uh, we had covered in john chapter 13 verse 10 jesus said that uh, uh, when we uh, can we just go back to john chapter 10 verse uh, john chapter 13 verse 10 jesus said that you are clean but not all of you so he was referring to the eleven being clean and judas not clean so we see here when now in verse 3 when jesus say, uh, says that you are already clean because of the word i have spoken to you so he has spoken this word in chapter 13 when he tells the eleven that you are you are uh, uh, you are clean but not all of you so he is referring to john chapter 13 verse uh 10 so over here we see that uh, jesus being a master teacher explains this four concepts in uh, imagery uh, he so he makes four images he explains the concept of vine vine dresser a fruit bearing branch and the non fruit bearing uh, branches so to conclude uh i would like to ask each one of us this question and the people that are uh, online that where do you see yourself in this picture this picture is not only a picture it is a mirror image are you a branch that is not bearing fruit or are you a fruit bearing branch there are only two categories that that are mentioned in the bible uh people that are saved and people that are lost it is heaven or hell there is never purgatory there is never people sitting on a fence there are there are only a person that is 
saved there is a person lost <coughs> so i'll uh, just close in prayer oh lord and heavenly father just thank you oh father lord god for giving this opportunity oh father lord god to gather together as a fellowship study your word oh father lord god and exalt your name on high we thank you for giving this privilege as wretched sinners oh father lord god to exalt the maker of heaven and earth thank you father lord god we pray oh father lord god <coughs> that uh, we as your true children oh father lord continue to study in your word oh father lord god abide in you oh father lord god and we pray oh father lord god that uh, you continue to sanctify us oh father lord god we today for the lord god like to ask forgiveness for all our sins which we have committed in thought word and deed knowingly and unknowingly oh father lord god we pray that you continue your process of sanctification in our lives oh father lord god so that we might be fruitful of father lord god our ministry might be fruit fruitful of father lord god so that we are fruitful when we reach out to people of father lord god we pray of father lord god that you give us the boldness and courage of father lord god that whenever we reach out to people we are not ashamed and fearful to proclaim your gospel of father lord god we pray of father lord god for all our brothers and sisters of father lord god that are still in deception and still deceiving others of father lord god we cry out for your mercy on them we pray of father lord god that you instill this desire to study your word in them of father lord god so that their spiritual eyes are opened and they also become fruit bearing branches of father lord god we pray for us as a congregation of father lord god that we stay grounded we stay humble of father lord god and if need be of father lord god you sanctify us show us and ground us of father lord god that we stay grounded and not exalt ourselves but give honor and glory to you alone of father lord god and that your will be done in our lives we ask all this in your mighty son jesus christ name amen